so glad to be here among you. Uh, before I came, I met with Mitchell, uh, the pastor before, and he said, you're either going to love me or hate me, but we're in the middle of a year-long series. And I said, oh, okay. Um, and he said, you know, you, you don't have to continue, but we had books made. And I was like, well, if you had books made, we have to continue. So um, if you don't have a book, there are books at the entrances. Um, but I'm just so glad to be in this series. It's called Unfold, A Year of Discovering Story. And how we connect with God's story, how we connect with one another, how we live that out. You have talked about how God, who God is and who we are as God's flawed people doing God's work in the world. Unfold is about understanding how God's story intersects with our own story. So we talked about the gift of God's grace, and today we start chapter 6, uh, Seeking God's Wisdom, God's Cosmic Wisdom. Uh, God's cosmic divine wisdom sounds so wonderful. Uh, when I'm in the car running errands, I'm driving focused on the next list, next thing on my to-do list, uh, feeling alone, I often sing a song that was popular when I was in youth group, so like a long time ago, and it helps me to feel connected with God. It helps me to stop and, and turn back and give praise to God. Uh, the song is, Our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. And if, you'll hear me sing that if we're in the car together. I'm not right now. And I want to be wise. Uh, when I was in high school, our youth uh, church youth group went to Schlitterbahn in New Braunfels, which is amazing. And um, one of my friends saw a sign that said, deep water at end of ride. You have gone too far to exit. Ask lifeguard for assistance. And that was the theme for all of high school. You know, that was Jesus. Deep water, end of ride, you've gone too far to exit. You have to ask the lifeguard for assistance. Um, that is some wisdom. Years later, this same friend uh, was in the French Riviera, and the entrance to the hotel swimming pool had a sign that said, swimming is forbidden in the absence of a savior. And she uh, wrote me an email right away, and she said, it's just like in Schlitterbahn. <laughs> So um, as I was thinking about wisdom all week, I saw this video on Twitter, and I thought, this is wisdom. So I want you to watch it and see what you think. What happened, Joey? My head is stuck. Your head is stuck? Mm -hmm. Really? Hey, How'd head you do hands. that? <laughs> You know, maybe we just need to change our perspective um, so that our problems will solve themselves. We, we try to hide our lack of wisdom. When we don't know something, we try to, you know, make it look like we know something. There was a man once who bought a boat, um, but he had no experience sailing. Uh, but he was so confident that he could handle this boat. So for weeks, um, he would practice in the harbor before he decided to take it out to sea. And so finally, he talked his wife into going onto the boat with him. And so they're sailing out to the harbor, and he reassures her, telling her that he's practiced enough in this harbor. He knows where every rock, where every reef, where every sandbar is. And just at that moment, there was a huge hidden rock uh, beneath the surface that made a large crunching sound on the boat from stem to stern. And the man said, there's one of them going by right now. <laughs> you know, we, we try to hide our lack of wisdom. 
Uh, wisdom always makes me think of uh, Robert Fulgham's book, All I Really Need to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten. Have you read this book? Yes. Uh, it, it, he says that wisdom was not found at the top of the graduate school ladder, but there in the sand pile in kindergarten, where he learned things like don't share, or like share, like don't hit people, like clean up your own mess, say you're sorry when you hurt somebody, wash your hands before you eat, and the most important, uh, take a nap every afternoon. <laughs> and then when you go out into the world, watch out for traffic, hold hands, and stick together. That kind of basic wisdom sounds like what we heard in Mark's gospel. A man asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus' response is to keep the commandments. Because if you do good, you will get good. That is basic wisdom. But then Jesus tells the man, the clincher, go sell what you own, give the money to the poor, um, and you will have treasure in heaven. And then come, follow me. And the man hears this and he's so shocked and he goes away grieving because he had so many possessions. You know, we can assume that this man um, who comes to Jesus is doing okay financially. Uh, we can assume that his mortgage is paid off, that his stock po portfolio is solid. We can assume that he is blessed in the ways that the world values. And now he wants to make sure that he will obtain eternal life. You know, he's a good rule follower, but he's really only interested in himself. He misses the point of what Jesus is all about. Uh, my kids played basketball when they were younger, and there comes a time as a parent when you realize that the kids are actually playing basketball. Now, this takes a while, um, but, but you realize, oh my gosh, they're really playing basketball. Uh, they're passing to each other. They're attempting layups. They're actually making baskets. Uh, but when they first start playing basketball, they don't pass, they aren't sure what a layup is, and the basket is just a little too high uh, for their throws to reach. They're not able to keep their eyes on the entire court because they're only focused on themselves. And the man in Mark's gospel cannot see outside of himself to see how he can walk alongside other people. Uh, did you notice the commandments that Jesus listed? Uh, don't commit murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat. Honor your father and your mother. When children learn about the Ten Commandments in Sunday school, we say that the first four are about our relationship with God. And that, the, you know, have no, other, have no other gods, have no idols, don't take the Lord's name in vain, keep the Sabbath day holy. And then the next six are all about how we are in relationship with other people. So it makes a cross, um, us to God and then us to other people. And those are the ones that Jesus lists. Honor your father and your mother. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Don't covet. He said that we were going to covet um, in the prayer. And we were like, covet? You're not supposed to do, but we covet prayers. Uh, these are all about um, other people. You know, eternal life is connected to what we do for other people. It's tied to justice. Uh, there was once a guru who asked his disciples how they could tell when the night had ended and the day begun. And one person said, when you see an animal in the distance and you can tell whether it is a cow or whether it is a horse. A no, said the guru. And another person said, when you look at a tree in the distance and you can tell whether it's a lilac tree or a mango tree. Wrong again, said the guru. Well then what is it, asked the disciples. And the guru said, when you look into the face of a man, any man, and you recognize your brother in him, when you look into the face of a woman, any woman, and you see your sister, and if you cannot do this, no matter what time it is by the sun, it is still night. Do we notice those around us? Do we notice injustice around us? And does the injustice that we see around us, does that injustice make us lose sleep? We hear today from Proverbs 
um, which is, is an example of wisdom literature in the Bible. And in Proverbs, wisdom is the ability to make good decisions. You know, how do we make good decisions? And we make good decisions by listening to God, by studying scripture, by learning from the circumstances of life. Uh, in Proverbs, when you live a life according to the rules, there will be reward. And when you violate the rules, there will be disaster. Proverbs says that when we obey God's teaching, we will prolong our life because wisdom is doing the next right thing that God wants us to do. So Proverbs has a lot of short sayings. Uh, when we read this passage in the Wednesday 8 a.m. Bible study, Marvel said, this is the scripture that you put on your bedroom mirror. So um, it's from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. And this is from the New Revised, New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. So I don't know if it's just a ploy to get us to buy more Bibles or not, but there's a new version. So, um, you know, if you want to buy it, it's there for you. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and high reward in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge God and God will make straight your paths. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Something happens to us when we live faithfully. We are changed. You know, God continually transforms us to be the body and the presence and the witness of Christ in this world as we are molded and shaped into the people that God wants us to be. We are supposed to be getting better at this living like Christ thing. It makes me think of Maya Angelou's words, do the best you can until you know better. And then when you know better, do better. I have this vivid memory of when I felt like I had failed as a parent. Um, I was driving down the road and my children were fighting and I had had enough. And I pulled over to the side of the road and I got out of the car, I slammed the door and I screamed as loud as I could. And then I walked around the car, and I got back in the car, and my children were terrified. <laughs> I had really scared them well. <laughs> and so I said, we're going to pray now. And I prayed that I would have patience, and that my children would treat one another with love and not anger. And then I said, amen. And then I drove, and it was silent till we got home. You know, too often, we do not respond out of love. We encounter views that we disagree with, and we're quick to, to dismiss not only someone's views and, and tell them that they're wrong, but we dismiss them as a human being, as a child of God. We don't ask questions. We don't wonder, why do you think that? That's so interesting. I, I, I've never thought of that before. Tell me more. Instead, we just write them off as people. You know, becoming more like Christ is wisdom. Uh, you know, that is when our lives reflect the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is seen in love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and generosity and faithfulness and self-control. In our Unfold Journals, um, there's some questions for reflection. Uh, the question for chapter 6 is, who do you turn to when you are seeking wisdom. When I am seeking God's wisdom, um, Psalm 46.10 always comes to mind. Be still and know that I am God. If I can just put all my worries into a box and be still and know that God is God, it usually works out okay. Almost always. Sometimes the best wisdom um, I have received has been when I least expected it. 
Um, I was a pastor in England for a year um, after seminary. Lee and I had been married for just a year. We didn't have children. And I remember being at this retreat um, for new pastors, and the district chairman was there. Uh, It's a role similar to a bishop. And they said something that transformed my life. Uh, transformed how I saw myself, transformed how I wanted to be in the world. Uh, This person said, I have four children, and I know two of them because of the choices that I made with the church. And, And so he said that he was always at church, he was always at meetings, he missed basketball games, he missed dinners. Um, he, He didn't know two of his children, and that was his choices, the decisions that he made. And I didn't know when Lee and I were going to have children, if we were going to have children, but I wanted that to not be my story. I wanted to choose myself. I wanted to choose my spouse. I wanted to choose my children. If possible, somehow balance um, trying to be the best pastor that I could be, but also be home for dinner and not miss the basketball games and, and hopefully know all my children. So may we not forget God's teaching. May our heart Keep God's commandments. May we trust in God with all our heart, all of our heart, and not rely on our own insight. In all of our ways, may we acknowledge God, and may God make, our, make straight our paths. Thanks be to God. And everyone said together, amen. amen.